Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's independent media production. Snare Spotlight Day. We're coming back with more from Dial Tune. Today, it's brass. If you've been watching our snare spotlight videos, you may have seen our previous video with the maple dial tune snare, which we had a ton of fun with here, exploring the range and the ease of tuning and the ease of head changes and stuff like that. Same realm, same mechanism, but now we're talking about a brass shell, specifically black nickel over brass, six and a half by 14. It's an amazing drum. Now, just to catch up, in case you haven't seen the previous video where we dealt with the maple drum, we'll talk about the mechanism and the way that these drums work a little bit up front here. First of all, this drum has lugs, but you'll see there are no tension rods for those lugs. Instead, we have a cable system run underneath that goes to a dial on either side of the drum so that you're adjusting all of the lug locations at once with a single dial via a Kevlar cable that's sort of woven through all of these little wheels and mechanisms around the edge to, in the end, give you even tensioning on all of them at the same time with a single twist of that knob. We have separate knobs for the batter and the rezzo so you can experiment with different sort of like tensions between the two of them, find what works at a given tension without having to go around all of the tension rods the way you normally would. You can just turn the knobs. Additionally, they have a proprietary hoop system which is super interesting, super functional, and super fast, which is basically you remove all the tension from the cable on the side you wanna change the head on, Click the head a couple of degrees around in a circle, come straight off, drop the new head on, put it back on, dial it up, and you're good to go. Lastly, the drum is outfitted with a DW mag throw off and it has a three position butt plate so you can easily switch between three different tensions without having to adjust the knob on the primary side. But enough talk, what does it sound like? Well, let's hear it at kind of a medium low tuning for starts. Right out of the gate, giving me exactly what I expect from a nickel over brass snare, which is, as they say, and I agree with, for metal drums, it does bridge the gap a little bit between wood and metal. It's not the brightest thing in the world. It's not the zingiest thing in the world. It's got a lot of body. It's got a lot of smack. It's got a lot of fatness. It's also super loud. It does cut through a mix. Uh, particularly medium tunings, not all drums will do that. So this is a great choice for this scenario, especially with their sort of proprietary die cast hoop thing going on. A lot of power, rim shots are cracking, you can also hit it in the center and still have plenty of presence. Upon removing the batter head, we can see that it has a fairly standard kind of folded over bearing edge like you'd see on a superphonic or similar style of shell. Flipping the drum over, same bearing edge on the bottom, fairly subtle snare beds, not too dramatic, you know, maybe five or six inches wide, something like that. Um, nothing crazy, like fairly standard stuff, so you know that lends it to giving us the expected response from a nickel over brass drum of this size. Additionally, around the bottom edge we have not one, not two, not three, but six very small vent holes. This is letting some air out, giving the drum a bit more of an airy sound, relieves us of boxiness, and to my ear adds a little bit of volume too. Now, if you've ever seen a Black Beauty or other nickel over brass style snare drums, there's a fair amount of them out there in the world. This is different than a straight up brass drum or a raw brass. The coating does change the sound. This is a style that's popular for a reason, basically. It gives a sound that really goes to tape or to Pro Tools well, and it also is loud enough and present enough for live situations to have articulation with, again, not being too bright, not being too big, just... I don't know, Just it, it's a drum that feels good to hit. Now because of the ease of tuning of this drum, we did more <laughs> uh, points of tuning today than we normally do. So we're gonna move through them and not try to take up too much time, but we're gonna go from a medium low now to a slightly higher medium with a couple of little adjustments to the snare side to dial it in.
Now, as you can see, it's gone up. The character hasn't changed a ton, but now things are starting to tighten up. They're starting to get a little more direct in both the ghost noty stuff and the hard hitting things and the rim shots. And as we continue to go up, you'll see that it stays fat, it stays clear, it stays feeling good in the center as well, but everything just kind of goes up and up and up and everything we find is usable. All right, now let's go toward what I would consider to be high tuning. I'm raising the batter up significantly. I'm raising the snare side up a little bit. We'll talk about that after, but let's hear some high stuff now. Now it's super cracking, it's still warm, articulate, fat, feels good, sounds good at the edge, sounds good at the center. And this is a good opportunity to talk about what's so great, um, particularly about having separate batter and snare side adjustment knobs. It is because what I'm listening for when I'm adjusting the snare side is way easier to hear if I can tap on the batter while I'm adjusting the snare side, which is virtually impossible with a normal drum because you have to adjust all those tension rods and then tap it, adjust them again, tap it. And with this one, I can just sit and tap it and turn the knob until I hear the tone that I'm looking for, which especially at higher tunings like this is a really great way to find that spot where it's not choked and it's still articulate, you know, I mean, beyond just adjusting the tension of the wires, now you have something as easy as that, the same way that you would just, you know, tighten up the wires for your articulation. You can do it to the snare side head just as easily. Now, as high as this is, um, we decided to see how high <laughs> we could go. According to the website, these Kevlar cables can take 700 pounds <laughs> of force, uh, which it's fair to say is more than we can exert with this knob. I think that I think the heads would probably give out first. So. We're gonna go ahead and just take it as high as I feel comfortable tuning it, um, just because I wanna see what's gonna happen. Well, we're all the way in piccolo country here, almost marching snare country uh, as far as what you would do with a snare at your kit. It still feels really good. It actually still feels good to hit in the center without catching the rim, which uh, is a challenge <laughs> at this kind of tension. And being able to adjust easily the snare side head when you're dealing with a batter tune this tight is almost like, it's bordering on mandatory. Like if, if I was tuning a standard drum to this, tension on the batter side, I'd be making a lot of micro adjustments to the snare side to make sure that I didn't have to play a rim shot and also that the snares weren't choked and the drum wasn't choked because this is an extraordinary amount of pressure on your standard single ply batter head that we're dealing with here. It's also worth noting that a lot of times drums of this size tuned this high will get into a scenario where you're not really hearing the drum anymore, you're only hearing the heads. There are recordings where that's a sound, you know, that maybe you're trying to replicate from classic recordings or it's a sound that you want to hear. For me, still being able to get some body out of the drum at this kind of tension takes it into a realm where I can consider this to be a usable tuning where it still sounds like a drum and not just like a timbali that's tuned so tight that it, it really can't move. It's hard to say if that's owed to the shell or the mechanism or you know the confluence of all of those things, but suffice to say that not every drum will do this at this tension, and it's, it's a pretty special thing to be able to know when you have a drum in front of you that is already this easy to adjust, that you also have this amount of leeway to work with in a recording or in a live situation.
All right, now, just because we did it in the in the Mabel video and we want to do it again, one of the things that's fun about these drums that is not necessarily even something you can do with a normal drum is to take all of the tension off of the batter head and play it that way. Because if you do that with a standard drum, you're going to have tension rods rattling, you're going to have things getting loose. And with this system, you can basically take it all the way off and turn this into this crazy kind of fat pancake dance groove kind of almost like sample sound that... It's fun enough live, but it really goes to recording amazingly. Clearly not an everyday choice, but again, the same as we were talking about with the screaming high tuning, this is another option that you have at your fingertips that you can go, again, from where we just were to this in seconds. And it's just ready to go. You don't really have to fuss with it at all. It's fair to say you're not really even needing to tune it. It's just a matter of setting attention, hitting it, and off you go. One interesting sort of side note that we noticed here today also is that this is an amazing system for kind of ear training to learn about what happens when you mix batter tension, snare side tension, and snare wire tension. When you take all of the variables of the tuning rods out of it and just look at one tension, the other tension, and the wire tension, you can, act, I mean, it's almost like a learning tool. Like if I was teaching a class on understanding these relationships, this is what I would want for that because we don't have to worry about the rest of it. It's just the tension. And like I was saying about the snare side head and tapping the batter as you adjust it, that's such a clear indication of what is going on between those two voices that ultimately make the third voice that we're hearing when we hit the drum. And it's so important when you're going after a sound to know what is going to happen if you change one of these variables. And this is a beautiful way of demonstrating that. Anybody who sees one of these in person, you can learn a lot just by sitting with it for a few minutes. Maybe one of the most interesting things that I was looking forward to in uh, experimenting with this drum because of having had the Maple one through the studio before is that it was hard to tell, you know, if you only have one example, what part of what you're hearing is the shell, what part of what you're hearing is the heads, and what part of what you're hearing when you hit it is all of this hardware that's doing all of this. Because as we said in the Maple video, it's heavy. Like, this is a lot of stuff on the drum that is allowing us to have this kind of convenience and flexibility of tuning. And it's fair to wonder, like, what that's going to do the sound. And between doing this with a maple drum and doing it with the metal drum, I have to say I'm really not experiencing the hardware hindering the sound at all. The only thing that makes me aware of the weight of all of this hardware is how solid the drum feels to hit it, basically. Like, it feels the same physically as hitting something like a bell brass, for instance. Not because it's made of bell brass or bronze or whatever you want to call it, but because the thing is substantial. It sits on the stand hard. When you hit it, it doesn't move. It's very, very sturdy, very substantial, and for me, especially in terms of like playing hard and really getting into the drum, I like that feeling. I don't like feeling like the thing I'm hitting is going to break under heavier sticks and heavier playing. Um, and more importantly, once you found your tuning, these hold the tuning really, really well. When you get to where you're going, you know, you kind of treat it like a guitar. Like if you're tuning down, go past where you want and then give it a little tension back up. And if you're going up, just go up and leave it there um, because you are basically tensioning a string <laughs> the same way as you would on a guitar or a bass or something like that. I'm really pleased at how different the brass and the wood are because that's the main reason that I know that the shells are really influencing this, the bearing edges are really influencing it, the wires, everything else, and all of this dress up on the outside is really just giving us the ability to move through these tunings, experiment with intervals, and find out everything that it's capable of.
Now it's worth mentioning also that it's really easy to scoff at new inventions and new ideas and anything that's perceived as something that's just for the sake of convenience. And I kind of want to get out in front of that and say that like at the end of the day, if it sounds good, if it gets you a sound that makes you happy, that's kind of all that matters. And the point of this is that we moved through all of these sounds incredibly fast. So there are things about this that are convenient, but there are also things about this that from a performance standpoint makes sense to me. And it does sound good. <laughs> it does do what it says it does. And it does it fast. Never mind the fact that you can change the heads in seconds too, which I mean, who wants to sit around and change heads all day? <laughs> All right, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much to Dial Tune for sharing this drum and, and their other drums with us in the past. We had a lot of fun with it today. Um, I particularly enjoyed <laughs> what happened when we cranked this thing up as tight as it would go. Please follow the link below. Check out their offerings. They have a lot of options, including a lot of shell options. Um, some that I just found out about today that are super duper exciting and probably even heavier than this drum. <laughs> Let us know if you have any experience with these too because uh, this is some kind of pretty new technology that for me is actually pretty exciting and it makes me think a lot, particularly about intervals and about, again, as like we were saying before, sort of the confluence of all these things making the sound that we have and getting variables out of the way so we can really just go straight to experimentation and chasing sounds. 